I want to talk about Sam Nunberg real quick. He, uh, an ex-Trump aide who had sort of, a, you know, a, a, a kind of dominated cable news for a 24-hour yeah. period when he uh, melted down, maybe is a little unkind, but he was <laughs> off the rails as far as somebody talking about his time in front of uh, the Mueller uh, investigation. Nunberg was the one who brought you to Mar-a-Lago. He was the one who thought it was a good idea for you to travel with Trump then. Yeah. And so then you wrote this unflattering piece, and uh, Trump was not happy with Nunberg. Yeah, uh, Trump fired him uh -huh. because of the piece, then rehired him later, and then fired him again. Um, the thing about Sam Nunberg that I realized when I was kind of stuck at Mar-a-Lago with him was that he is part of this kind of rotating cast of, like, kind of weird characters that Trump has always liked to have around him who are all sort of aspiring mini Trumps, you yeah. know? Like, they dress like him. They, they, they kind of take on his affect and his, like, his linguistic stylings. Like, they'll use the same words as him. And they all try to mimic his kind of performance. It, it, and it's funny because, like, you know, he fires people and hires people all the time. But even now in the White House, he keeps people like that around. And he sets up this kind of... The, the environment he fosters is sort of like the Hunger Games, where he, he puts all... He, he pits his aides against each other and kind of feels like whoever's able to survive and emerge victorious, or that's the best person to have around him. And so the reports, obviously, of chaos, what seems like what you're saying is he likes chaos, but uh, he does not care for the reports of chaos. <laughs> right. He likes chaos. He just doesn't like the media calling it chaos. Right. right? I think he actually does thrive in this kind of uh, th this chaotic environment. He fosters it. He did at the Trump Organization before he was president. He, he does now as, uh, in, in the White House. Um, but what he doesn't like is when the media is uh, constantly saying, you know, another chaotic day in the White House, you know, and your, your nightly monologues about <laughs> He probably doesn't care for those either. But, but the thing is, he, he does... It's funny, I think he likes the stories about, you know, people on the brink of being fired. Because yeah. if you think about it, he's always had, ever since his apprentice days, he's loved, he doesn't actually like the act of firing people. You know, we've seen reporting about this. He doesn't like sitting down with a staffer and saying, I'm sorry, this isn't working out. No. But he likes performing his authority and his power, yeah. right? He likes, he, you know, even on The Apprentice, he would practice the delivery of his line and like the swivel of his finger when he like pointed to the person being fired. And he still does that. Like he he likes the, the performance of like, look how powerful I am. Everyone Everyone's fate is in my hand, and I get to decide which subordinates will survive and which ones won't. All of that stuff is it, he loves. He just doesn't like when we call it chaos. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and, and has this been, you know, people ask me all the time uh, for my job, has it been just a fascinating time to work in Washington, D.C.? I think, are you going to look back on it and say, oh, I'm so happy I worked there? Or are you going to look back and say, I wish I had any other job in the world? <laughs> I, I no, I mean I'm glad that I have you know this like front row seat to this historic thing. It's a, it's just hard because I don't know how it's going to turn out, and yeah. nobody does. And obviously, those of us who got his <laughs> presidential aspirations so wrong are very uh, careful with predictions. <laughs> yeah. But but maybe we'll look back at this time as like a great moment in American history, um, and, and maybe we won't. Yeah. <laughs> Here's for, well, here's hoping for yeah, your and I sakes, optimistic. it's great. Yeah, it turns out great. And you and I get statues. Yeah, exactly. Uh, thanks so much for being here. McKay Collins, everybody.